Hi there, and welcome to the Little Fern Fibers Knitting and Crafting Podcast. My name is Ellie, and this is a podcast about knitting and spinning and all my other um, crafting endeavors and things that I'd like to make. Um, I am from Wisconsin in the United States, and um, yeah, if you are new here, welcome. I'm glad to have you, and if you are returning, um, thanks for sitting down with me again. Um, so I haven't recorded in a while. It's just, it's been busy. Um, we have two little ones, so, um, I wouldn't want it busy in any other way. Uh, spring is just around the corner. It's very, very gently knocking at our door. So that is wonderfully welcome. And, um, yeah, it'll be nice to have a little bit more sunshine and some bird song in the morning and some warmer weather too. So I hope wherever you are, your season transition is a gentle and smooth one. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I haven't done too, too much knitting. Um, the Wolf Project wrapped up and if you would like more information about that, uh, I did do some spinning of wolf fur for the International Wolf Center in Ely, Minnesota, and those projects that I spun from it um, and knitted the objects were then put into an annual auction that they have. There's more information in previous uh, episodes if you are interested in that. But the auction was held in the beginning of March and the end of February, and it went really well. It was fun to see, um, you know, people be interested and you know, so ready to support the wolves and the center's mission. So that was nice to have wrapped up. Uh, I put, I had five things in the auction that I spun from Denali's, who's an ambassador wolf there. I spun from his fur and then knit into um, some fingerless mittens, a pair of gloves, a hat, and then two skeins of yarn. And there were so many beautiful things in there that so many craftsmen and the other women that uh, spun put in there and it was just, it's really cool to see, um, you know, so many artists come together to support such a wonderful cause and to support the wolves. That makes me so happy. So I will put a little video maybe here. So there are five projects total that I made this year for the International Wolf Center's annual auction. And I spun Denali's fur. And with that fur, I was able to come up with five different items for this auction. So the first being the Hulvdra mittens, or mitts, fingerless mitts by, um, the pattern is actually by uh, Inga from Knitting Traditions, and she was just testing it, and I actually test her pattern um, with this yarn, and I just used, um, it was called Elemental Effects. It was 100% fingering, white wool and I had it in two different colors being this navy and then this kind of um bright gold and it was a really quick super quick knit um I followed her pattern um exactly as the instructions were and then um for another contrasting color I just used some of the um wool fur yarn that I had so I really like how these turned out I made um like the size small so I think they look really cool they're super warm um and yeah I hope whoever whoever gets these are super happy with them so that was the first one and the next I um are these mittens that I knit with another 100% wool yarn. I'm not exactly sure what the yarn was, but um, they have uh, felted wolf paws on the hands. Um, so I just used Denali's fur, um, took it right out of the bag and just uh, needle felted it right into the 100% wool. Um, I made like a little tracing and then I just transferred it on there. Um, and then the cuffs are uh, fully wool for yarn and look at the halo. That's so pretty. So they're super warm. Um, the felting worked out really well. 
It's kind of just finagling it that I didn't go through the back. There's a little bit on the back that's felted, but hopefully whoever gets them uh, treasures that they are handmade. Uh, and I think you can wear them like this, or I mean, you could even wear them with the paws on the inside, but you gotta be, I suppose, a little more mindful of the wear on the felted bits. But that was fun, so they sell with mittens as well. And then uh, I just spun a normal skein. Um, so this is a two ply, it's about 40, or I'm sorry, it's about 60 yards, and it is one ply of Denali. And then I plied it with a commercial 100% uh, baby alpaca. So here's the yarn. It's probably like a worsted or bulky weight. And this, I spun the exact same kind of yarn. And that is what I used um, in these two projects and another one as well. So there's this skein. And then I also wanted to try making like an art yarn out of the wool fern. So I made like a bobble of art yarn. And lots of times you'll see weavers use yarns like this where there's the huge big beehive shells and it's so soft and squishy and there's beautiful coils in there. Um, so what I did with this is I core spun um, Denali's fur in kind of thicker and thinner sections and then I plied it back on it or plied it with um, some really strong nylon thread and that is what I that is what I came up with so this is only 2.6 yards so it's not much but for weavings this would be you know a really standout standout element to add so I was really excited to have this in there this year and then the last thing I made a hat and I'm I'm okay with it um would I have done it differently yes but I think it turned out okay and here it is let me find the back here so it's just like a slouchy just like a slouchy hat there is a a braid of Denali fur again using this yarn so it's a cabled braid it's kind of hard to see the cable because it is so fluffy and haloey and then this is just a Latvian braid so I just kind of like made up this pattern and I didn't have enough red but I did have just enough wool fur so I put a little boop boop spot of wool fur on the back so that's what this one is so those are the five items that I will be putting in the auction for the International Wolf Center this year and uh, I'm so excited and I hope they do really well and the wolves definitely need all the support they can get. So uh, looking forward to this year's auction and of course next year too. So there you have it. And I did record before I sent the items back to the center. I did a little recording because uh, I could finally show those. Um, so yeah, that was that. And other than that, the other thing that I knit, oh, this, this was the biggest thing. Um, I love it. I worn it a lot. I love how it turned out. Sorry for the squeaky chair. Okay, so this is that Frankenstein cardigan that I had mentioned that I wanted to make a couple episodes ago. And true to its name, it's like a full on Frankenstein sweater. So this is it. Um, it's a wonderful lichen -y. It's called Golden Heather and it's Let Lopey. Uh, I actually, I couldn't find it when I was looking for this yarn. It was really hard to find. And I actually ordered it from the Icelandic store in Iceland. So if you're looking for Let Lopi and your local yarn store is out, check them out because it was they were great to work with. Um, it is bedtime here, so I'm just keeping an eye on the little ones. Um, so what this is, it's a hodgepodge. It is the Felix Cardigan by Amy... Christopher? Christopher? 
Christopher's, mashed together with B Mandarin's, Melody Hoffman's Tulip Jumper. And that's where the scalloped edging comes in the bottom. You'll see the Frankenstein, see what I mean? So how I started is I started off with the Felix cardigan pattern. I think I chose the first size. I think I was using a size nine needle. I knit the body as the pattern called for. And you pick up for the neckline. So this was an after thought neckline. So, you know, knit through the body and then and then it. Um, and I played around with the length a couple of times. Uh, I was thinking I'd like it cropped at first, kind of like um, the tulip jumper, but I don't know how much realistically I'll, I would wear that. So first I did it cropped and then I started the scallop bottom, didn't like it, so I ripped back, then I made it longer, too long, ripped back. I probably went back and forth with that um, a while, a few times. So then I finally found the length that I wanted and I kept knitting and I realized that, you know, I had ripped back and I had already started the scallop and I kept using the same needle. So I used a nine for the body then I think I used a, a little more, or no, I used a ten and a half for the body and then I think I was using like a, I don't know, like a six maybe or an eight right here. I just, it's really really Frankenstein together, but you know what? I think it's all right. It gives it a little dimension. And then, so I followed the Felix pattern up to this point. And then looking at the second size of B Mandarins of the Tulip Jumper, I kind of figured out um, how many scallops with the stitch count around the bottom I would need. Um, you know, I divided that to find the number uh, of stitches that each scallop section would be. And then I just kind of, honestly, it was like trial and error, like, oh, this scallop's a little too white, a little too skinny. And then, you know, I finally found the the count of the stitches that matched up to the the number of stitches that I had. And that's, that's how that worked out. And the scallop edging, if you I haven't done that super easy. It took me a little bit. It's essentially kind of just like a German short row technique and that was that. And then I think I did a uh, nine needle for the sleeves and uh, I just, I love that little violet. I think that's such a, you know, dainty little feature. Um, but then I did a nine for the sleeves. I want to kind of like bracelet length. Usually I feel like I think I want longer sleeves and I'm gonna roll them, but that's not realistic. I Half the time I always have them rolled up anyway, so I went shorter than I usually do for sleeves. And I did the normal bind off, um, you know, just a, I think a one by rub, one rib, and then I was like, let's, let's mash it up a little bit more. So I took the <clears throat> uh, number of stitches that I had for the circumference of the the cuff here and then again it took me probably like six times of ripping it back and figuring out but um i went for a little scalloped uh edge on the wrist here and i think i came up with like six stitches for each uh scallop section but i like how that turned out y you know you can't really tell it's very subtle but um, i thought it gave it a little extra uh, you know, it kind of matched with the hemline and I, I like that and it is kind of a feminine look. And then you pick up the neckband here and I was going by the Felix pattern for this. So I picked up the stitches here and again, <laughs> did the normal, um, the rib pattern and then I ripped it back and I was like, let's see if I can kind of make it work with the scallop. So you'll see a really gentle scalp. It's kind of hard to see when it's like stretched out, but maybe you can kind of see it. Um, it's 
again, ripping back how many, you know, how many scallops I want to fit in, what I wanted them to look like. So it's, it's just very subtle, but I, again, liked that um, cohesion of the pattern, even though it's quite mishmash together. So I uh, did a normal button band that her, the Felix cardigan called for. And um, my mom has a large collection of buttons that she kind of inherited from both of my grandmothers. So it was fun to be able to go through that and um, pick out some beautiful little little wooden buttons there. And uh, I think that really finished off the piece. So I've been wearing it a lot. It's super warm and, um, you know, it's nice to kind of throw on if I go outside with uh, our daughters and it's nice and warm and snuggly and super, super durable. So I'm really happy that I... I finally did it because I had it in my mind for a while that this was something I wanted to try and the process was really rewarding because it was uh, you know a lot of figuring and figuring out how I wanted to look kind of um, yeah personalize it a little bit so that was really fun to work on and I really love this color um, so that was that and it probably took about a month or so of knitting, um, I'd say. And then the other thing that I finished that uh, my husband wanted a pair of fingerless mittens. And he used to have them a long time ago, like when, a long, long time ago. And um, I don't know whatever happened to him. So I wanted to knit him a pair and here they are. They're super durable. I will put a link to everything that I talk about, but this was a pattern that I found on Ravelry and it was actually um, an old newspaper clipping uh, from the American Red Cross for like army gloves uh, during World War II. So that was kind of a cool pattern to follow. And these are them. They, uh, he said they are super warm, which I, I can sure believe it because it's a super tight, um, tight fabric. Uh, I think I used like a size two needle, 2.5, 2.5 millimeter needle. And the yarn that I chose was Peace Fleece and it was their worsted weight yarn. So you can imagine that, you know, Peace Fleece is, that's a, you know, a really solid, um, snuggly yarn and to knit it in such a tight gauge really makes this fabric super warm. Uh, I think he probably doesn't wear them quite as much because um, I think his hands probably like sweat in here but <laughs> uh, anyways it's that was a fun project to do and um, to be able to knit for him. I, I always enjoy that because he can be a tricky one to knit for. Not that he's picky but I never quite know what you know what what he'd actually wear and if he's just humoring me so but I think he really likes season that was fun to make and um yeah I will put a link to the patterns that I talk about anyways mm, what else I guess the only other thing that I am working on is that and I, I've just been kind of slowly picking at it but I kind of would like to have it finished in time for warmer weather so I have I have some time but I am working on um the hella hella top um by ooh, I'm not sure her name I will put it but uh it's a beautiful summery just I just it's so I don't know flowy easy comfortable looking and I will put a picture of it somewhere but this is all I, I have so far I just have you know the what will be like the you know the neck and the back and um, so far so good the yarn I am using is Juniper Moon Farm Zoe and it's it's a really pretty color it's um, kind of like a taupey sandy beigey I don't know very very earthy color and 60% uh, cotton and 40% linen so it has 
This is like exactly the kind of yarn that I was hoping to have for this top. I think it will have a very, you know, the whole kind of casual feel that I'm going for. And then I have some pretty cool buttons that will I chose from my mom's collection that um that I'm excited to use for it. So hopefully I can pluck along on that and have maybe more to show you next time or a finished object. But yeah, knitting has just not been um the forefront lately. But check out this fabric. It's uh it's almost like um the yarn it's like it looks like it's chain oh, i was gonna say chain plied but it must be a looks like it's a three ply maybe like a strand of cotton almost and then two strands of linen i don't know if that's gonna focus probably not anyways it gives it a lot of texture and kind of the um the unevenness i like it i'm not sure if you can totally tell but um yeah i really like this yarn it's knitting up fairly quickly uh yeah hopefully i can kind of keep working on it and keep the knitting energy flowing because it hasn't quite been it's been at a trickle lately um i've just been doing other things we are uh, getting chickens this spring i wanted chickens for a really long time i husband and I have talked about it and um <clears throat> this year it just kind of we kind of just decided to jump for it and go and uh so we're we'll have some little baby peepers in about a month no two weeks two weeks so that is really exciting and so honestly why I haven't been doing too much knitting is we've been getting the coop ready and that took a lot of painting and painting everything in the basement and then assembling it all and reading and listening to things about chickens lately. So that has kind of been where my energy is, but <clears throat> I definitely have some projects lined up for summer that will be, that will be fun to work on. So to be honest, that's kind of all I have. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to uh say was two episodes ago i had the name of the podcast or not the podcast winner, the giveaway winner uh that i did a while ago and that person has yet to reach out they have not reached out so and i know last time i said if i don't hear from them i will pick another new winner so i drew a new name from those comments of that original giveaway video and i will put the comment here uh, it was, the name I drew is, um, it was a random comment picker, uh, knit one by the sea, pearl two by land, or knit one by land, pearl two by sea, I don't know, I'll put it here, but, uh, she chose the fiber that she wanted to be, which was the question that I asked for the giveaway, and she gave a really fantastic answer, it was, um, a fantasy fiber of mermaid hair, and, tree moss mixed with wool which that sounds very magical I have a feeling like if you wore a garment with that you'd probably have like special powers or something because that sounds awesome that should be like a well, anyways congratulations to knit one by land and knit two by sea I hope you enjoy your Turkish drop spindle and your wool and that you find a beautiful mermaid who is willing to donate some of her hair and you find an entish tree who has you know tons and tons of beautiful moss and lichen that allows you to spin that magical yarn so how cool would that be anyways congratulations and um i think that's kind of all all I've got. So thanks for uh, sticking around and coming back. Again, I don't know when the next episode will be, but um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be another kind of random fly by the seat of my overalls, but um, yeah. So until then, I hope you are well. I hope you have lots of beautiful stitches on your needles and yeah, the seasonal changes are kind of 
gently carrying you along and keeping that knitting and crafting energy flowing. So uh, until the next time, see ya.